Hello. Today we're going to talk about how to use a 40 millimeter lens to shoot architectural photography but get the coverage of probably equivalent of a 28 or 24 millimeter but without the distortion which you get with wide angle lenses. To do this we're going to use a dual axis shifting. This means this is camera is going to be going up and down this way on the axis here and this here we shift on the side. And we're going to take from this we're just going to take four pictures. One, two on the top, two on the bottom and then we're going to stitch it in. Just, just so that you see what happens. This picture here on the computer right now is what this lens is showing us. Now, once we've done the stitching together, I've done one already. We should have this here. There we go. So, this is the coverage which we get with the shift. It's amazing. The difference between that and that is quite surprising. All right. Uh, having said that, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the camera is tethered correctly and talking to the uh, laptop. So, um, to do that, we go to a software here which is already installed. It's called um, the Acquire. It's the Fuji software for tethering. There we look at the defined destination folder to make sure vid test is what we're going to be using through the whole thing. So let's go to Lightroom, make sure that we're the tether is ready to go there. We have auto enabled, already enabled, auto setting, and the settings you choose these two which say vid test, vid test. Those are important. Once you've got those all done, you're ready to rock and roll, and you can just take a picture and it will show up on your computer in a minute. This takes uh, 100 and something megabyte size pictures. Everything takes a while. This is a very fast computer. Uh, it's a, uh, a Mac Pro 16-inch, uh, the latest edition, expensive piece of gear, but the speed is important because when you're shooting with these things and you're, de you're dealing with, sometimes I shoot nine actual frames by the shifting and I bracket those uh, nine times, that's uh, 81 images. There's a lot of computer and grunt needed to do these things. The longer you stand around while you're on the location shooting, the more time you're wasting and not shooting. So, important. It's fast computer. We've got that. All right. Having said that, that's already fine and good. We're going to move now to the camera. We want to make sure that the camera settings are all uh, correct for this picture. We have a 35 millimeter lens. We have a, uh, of a medium format. We need to be able to talk to them. They're hooked up by a Mirex uh, adapter. No electronics inside, so we have to set these things up. I have all these functions buttons set up already, but for myself, so I know how to do this automatically without looking at the camera. But I'm going to show you what we need to do first. First of all, the camera needs to be level. We just pull down the finger there, camera is level. If not, we've got a Swiss Acro Cube, we can turn it and level it, but let's not do that. Okay, that's there. Next thing, 35 millimeter. Really important not to forget that. Here we go. 35 millimeters off, you will see the difference of the, how the frame changes in size because of the format. If you're in, not in it, you will have a circle of light will be infringed. You will have vignetting, things like that, which we don't want. So do not use it in auto. It's another tip because there is no electronics. It doesn't understand auto. It has to be on like it is there. Done. All right. Next, we want to make sure that uh, the IBIS is not on. There's, there's vibration reduction system is fantastic on this camera, but do we need it? We've got this mounted really solidly, no. So let's get rid of that. We go on that. It's continuous mode is only, it's off. Good. Now, when we're shooting, we don't want to, you know, push down and move the camera every time we're taking your shutter release, so we put it on a timer. You can use a telephone, a remote. I find it tricky and annoying if the software isn't that good. It's another piece to fall on the floor. This way, I just set it at uh, two second exposure, good enough for me. Now, shutter, we have lots of shutters types of things. I use electronic shutter. So here we have the choice of shutters. ES is what we're using, just so you know, it's very silent, no vibration, important when you're doing lots of images and stuff. Uh, okay, having said that, we now need, to, with camera is ready to go, 
what we need to understand is that this camera is already set up for the picture so we don't have to do composition or anything all we're going to do is, is start worrying about the focus this camera or lens should i say is extremely sharp lens it's the sharpest lens i have in my camera bag it's a hot ply a uh, 40 millimeter tilt shift with Zeiss, Carl Zeiss optics inside it. Amazingly sharp. And this wheel really comes into play. We will see that in a second, because here we're going to go in now to zoom in on our focus. We're going to drop this little uh, square over the picture here in the corner. Good enough for me there. Now let's just zoom in. And here we're zoomed in on that picture. And now watch the focus on that. We need to. I forgot to say... So open up the lens to four. It's better. You can focus at 11, but it's even sharper if you do it at that. And here is, we're going to get it perfectly sharp. Once we've got that achieved, I use a piece of tape I always keep on my tripod. I sit this on there and I take the focus ring down. It does not move. Next thing, you must remember to disengage this wheel. Otherwise, your focus will change. Your focus will change when you turn the camera because of these wheels here. So, make sure that doesn't happen. All right. Let's uh, zoom out here. And we need to uh, level the camera off here from before. Doot, 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 doot. Come on, camera. Get level. It's level. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to start shooting off frames. This is the shift here from the camera. As you can see in the picture, you can see how much shift we're getting. We must be careful that when we shift these things here, that we do not over shift the vertical on the mirror X because uh, it's hard to see, but in this corner here, on the top right corner, you're going to start getting vignetting inside uh, for the circle of light is infringed upon. So I have settings which I know which are on the back. Each lens has a different setting, and I know these from experience. I've been shooting with this camera and this lens, well, this camera for two years nearly. Uh, so I know these, but you've got to figure this out for yourselves when you do this. Enough said on that. All right. So now we're looking at the quadrant. We're in the lower left quadrant. We want to take a picture. Let's squeeze the thing. We're taking a picture. You don't hear it. Silent shutter. There we go. Picture's taken. We want to move to the other side. Very simple. Push down this button. Swing the camera all the way around. Open it up on this on the screen. Swing it back. Make sure that we're going back to our, there we are, horizontal, bang, ready, shoot the next picture. This is how simple that is. Once that picture is shot, now we need to move the camera, drop that down. As you can see, we've dropped the camera down, and here we are at this point. We just do shoot another picture. Our uh, rock and roll, fondly known as the beast. This camera is so bulky and pieces are heavy. Uh, it's the heaviest camera in my bag too, aside from the shot, but it's it's like indestructible. All right, that's been shot. We need to swing the camera around to the other side. Let's do that. Find our little tab down here and off we go. Camera's up. Swing it back around. Put a horizontal. It's in folk. Uh, leveled. Off we go. So now we've shot four pictures, two here, two here. We want to see what they look like in there. Uh, there's the last picture coming through. We're going to stitch these together, feel stitching. Control M means uh, uh, st uh, stitching. And, uh, this computer is fast, uh, but even with the fastest laptop probably in the world at the moment, you still having to wait a little bit in field. Here it is, the picture's starting to come in. There we go. By the way, while we're waiting for that to happen, I'm talking about Lightroom, the stitching. Uh, if you use uh, Capture One uh, with this uh, camera and the raw files, the amount of uh, dynamic range which one can extract from uh, a raw file is extraordinary in Capture One. Better, I could say, than in Lightroom. But the problem is, does not have stitching. For you have to export it to stitch it uh, in, in Capture One. Lightroom does it all at the push of one button, and it's there already done. Blend it in. Here's our picture. What do you say about that? 
Isn't that extraordinary and simple to do? The coverage is great. The distortion is absolutely minimum because we're shooting 40 millimeter lens. This is quality stuff. All right, for now, I'll leave you. Uh, next time I come back, I'll show you how to do the bracketing and in the field, the outside with the light, all these other things. But for now, this is Christopher Leggett. Thank you very much. Goodbye.